of a day, the Committee on Health, Land, Culture, and Justice is now called to order. Today is Tuesday, September 21, 2021. The time is 9.04 a.m. Notices for this public hearing were disseminated via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets and in, published in the Guam Daily Post on Tuesday, September 14, and again on Saturday, September 18, 2021. The Zoom meeting is hosted by the legislature's MIS staff, and I thank them for their assistance. The host will mute all Zoom participants until called upon by the chair. When called upon, please state your name for record keeping purposes. There's one agenda item this morning that is bill number 198-36 COR introduced by Jose Pito Terlahi, Mary Camacho Torres, Tina Rose Munya Barnes, Therese M. Terlahi. It is an act to transfer lots number R29A and lot 29A consisting of 8.955 plus or minus and 7544 plus or minus square meters in the municipality of Derido to the Guam Regional Transit Authority for the purpose of developing and constructing a park and ride facility. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my colleagues this morning, beginning with, with Senator Pito Terlahi, the main sponsor of the bill, along with co-sponsor Senator Mary Camacho Torres, and also Senators Anthony Adda, Senator Joanne Brown, and Senator Tello Taitui. Thank you, Senators, for joining us this morning. So we will begin. Um, I would like to note that um, there was another bill for a park and ride facility, and this uh, that was bill number 131-36 that had a public hearing and it remains in my committee. Uh, but this for this bill is for a different lot number. And both of them were are located in Derido. You will now hear from the panel beginning with the, I'm sorry, I would like to ask the sponsor to introduce the bill. Senator Terlahi. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker and Madam Chair. Uh, I want to thank everyone uh, that's on board. I want to thank uh, my colleagues and all those in attendance uh, for bill number 198-36, which was introduced at the request of the Guam Regional uh, Transit Authority in order to transfer lot number R29A and lot number 29A consisting of 8,955 plus square meter and 7,544 plus square meter to the Guam Regional Transfer Authority for the purpose of constructing uh, a park and ride facility. Ladies and gentlemen, this measure replaces bill number 131-36, which listed a different property that was not as amendable to all the stakeholders. And together the committee uh, GRTA, the Dado Mayor's, uh, Mayor's Office, and Land Management have come out with uh, come up with a uh, property that works for all the parties involved. Please remember that the Federal Transit Authority has awarded uh, GRTA with a total of 9.2 million uh, federal grant to construct this building. GRTA has been making strides towards improving our island mass transit system, and this is another bridge that needs to be crossed to deliver our residents a world-class transit system and reduce our residents' reliance on expensive fuel, driving to work on a daily basis and increasing the wear and tear on the road. The Department of Land Management has provided the map so you can all see the parcel of land identified for this project. And I humbly ask everyone, all my colleagues for your support and I'm open to any suggestion you may have to make the, to make this view better. And I want to thank everyone of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Terlahi. We have um, with us today, and I want to thank them for being present, is Mayor Savaris of Dedido, Situs Masi Mayor. We also have the chairman of the Guam Regional Transit Authority Board, Mr. Alejo Sablan, and we have the Guam Regional Transit Authority Executive Manager, Mr. Celestin Babauta, together with uh, Jennifer Cruz from GRTA as well. So welcome to all of you and uh, thank you for joining us. So we will begin now with uh, the Chairman of the GRTA Board, Mr. Sablan.
Buenas and day, Madam Speaker and Honorable Senators. My name is Alejo Sablon, Chairman of the Guam Regional Transit Authority's Board of Directors. On behalf of my fellow board members, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for allowing me to testify in support of Bill 198-36-COR. The legislation will convey the property to GRTA for the purpose of building a park and ride facility. In less than three years that we assume leadership of GRTA, we have been trying our best to provide the people of Guam with a transit system that will reduce congestion as well as improving their social and economic welfare. Between Dededo, Jigo, and Anderson Air Force Base, over 50,000 residents reside in those areas. Traffic congestion is horrendous because the roads are not built to accommodate the thousands of drivers driving their vehicles to and from work school and other essential destinations. To help address the congestion, GRTA submitted a competitive grant application to build a park and ride facility, purchase electric buses, electric cars, construct charging stations, purchase technology, transportation management system. And vital to all of these is the development of an electrification plan. Fortunately, GRTA was awarded a 9.5 million grant by the Federal Transit Administration. However, the park and ride facility will not be possible without the property. It is our belief that with a park and ride facility, drivers will park their cars at the facility, then get on an electric bus, and thus will contribute to lessening traffic congestion. Building a park and ride facility will essentially fulfill a very important thrust of the grant application. The title of the application is Phase One of the Road to Education. The first route that GRTA will establish will be one where an electric bus will depart the park and ride facility to UOG, GCC, George Washington High School, and Father Dreñas Memorial High School. Thousands of students live in Jigo, Dedero, and Anderson Air Force Base if they desire to pursue higher education. It is their bridge to a better quality of life and road to prosperity. However, many do not have reliable transportation to and from school. With electric cars that will be used to transport them to the park and ride facility, then get on an electric bus that will bring them to school, their dream of pursuing college education will be achievable. Make no mistake that one will grow in its economy, its economy with a well-educated workforce. On the contrary, it is vital that Guam develop its own workforce in order to expand its economy. The students of Jigo, Dedero, Anderson Air Force Base, if given an opportunity to attend UOG, GCC, George Washington High School or Father Dreñas Memorial School, undoubtedly will make huge dividends in stimulating the island's economy. They will be accountants, nurses, teachers, mechanics, doctors, lawyers, etc., who will make Guam's economy vibrant and strong. In view of all the information I have mentioned, I am humbly asking you, Honorable Madam Speaker and Honorable Senators of the 36th Guam Legislature to please support the passage of Bill number 198-36-COR. Sincerely, Alejo C. Sablon, Chairman Guam Regional Transit Authority Board of Directors. Thank you. Jesus Masi, Mr. Chair. We'll now hear from the Executive Director of GRTA, Mr. Selva Bata. Good morning, Madam Speaker and Senators. Thank you for this opportunity to um, testify on behalf of your 198-36. My name is Celestine Cruz Bedalta, Executive Manager of the Guam Regional Transit Authority. It is with utmost respect to appear before the 36th Guam Legislature to testify in favor of Bill Number 198-36 COR. Essentially, the legislation will transfer Lot 2, Block 9A, and Lot R2, Block 9A, to GRTA for a park and ride facility in the village of Derido. The park and ride facility will address at least the following congestion, reliable transportation for students, workers, paratransit riders, or other residents of Guam. 
through a competitive grant application, we submitted to the Federal Transit Administration. GRTA was awarded $9.5 million. The park and ride facility will have a profound effect in addressing traffic congestion in northern Guam. The roads at Jigo and Dededo that were built many years ago are not capable of coping with thousands of riders traversing the roads daily. Over $6 million of the funding will be used to purchase electric buses and build the facility. Hundreds of people will either park their vehicles there or be dropped off and ride the electric buses to their destinations on a daily basis. Without question, the facility will contribute not only in addressing traffic congestion, but also reduce traffic accidents and fatalities, enhance the environmental conditions in Northern Guam, and put money into people's pocketbooks because they will save money on gas. The facility will also be the site where thousands of students, workers, faculty, and other individuals who are attending or working at the University of Guam, Guam Community College, George Washington High School, and Father Duenas Memorial High School can go to for reliable transportation. Additionally, there will be par electric cars that will bring riders without means to go to the park and bike facility. From there, they will have drivers on electric buses waiting to transport them. Madam Speaker, your support of Bill 198-36 is for, vital for the people of Dededo, Jigu, and Anderson Air Force Base. The potential support of park and ride facility for over 50,000 residents residing in the villages and the base is limitless. Without doubt, it will have an impact on those advantages I mentioned earlier on my presentation. Imagine the thousands of students who then have reliable transportation to school. Such students will achieve their education aspirations. They will be our doctors, our nurses, our mechanics, our lawyers, our accountants and teachers who will be the future leaders of Guam. Moreover, the education they receive is their bridge from poverty to prosperity. For the reasons I noted and others, Governor Lulion Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio strongly supports the building of a park and ride facility in the village of Dedede. Madam Speaker and Senators, to do some Aussie for allowing me the opportunity to testify in favor of Bill number 198-36. Respectfully, Selba Bauta, Executive Manager for the Guam Regional Transit Authority. Thank you. Sidhu Masi, Mr. Babauta. We'll now hear from the Mayor of Dedido, Mayor Savaris. Hi, good morning, um, Madam Speaker and uh, members of the 36th Guam Legislature. Um, I am Melissa Savaris, Mayor of Dedido, and also the Chairperson of the uh, Dedido Municipal Planning Council. Uh, like you had mentioned at the beginning of your statement, uh, Madam Speaker, is that Back in May, there was a public hearing uh, to support a park and ride facility at a different location. That was Bill 131-36 uh, COR. And at that public hearing, uh, members of the Dedito Municipal Planning Council, as well as myself, uh, uh, disagreed with the location of the facility of that, back then that facility, that property that was, um, in, in that bill 131-36. However, uh, after that public hearing, we actually met with the Guam Regional, um, Mass Tran Guam Regional Transit Authority and the Department of Land Management. And this is where um, bill number 198-36 came into with a different lot number and property. We visited several uh, locations within the Dedido property to see which properties are more feasible, especially targeting the northern residents, uh, like Mr. Babata had mentioned, Dedido Jigo, and then of course residents from Anderson as well, that want to trans to ride a transit bus, um, uh, bus to Manila to further their education. Higher education is at GCC, UOG, and then those that. Uh, attend GW, not necessarily students, but teachers also and staff. And so we, when we looked at the, the property um, lot R2 uh, track 9A, 
and lot two, block nine A, uh, being that the buses will be going to Manila, we looked at the accessibility for traffic control. They're not making new turns. And from this particular property that uh, land management had shown us, it's a perfect route because the buses, they come in, pull into Loretta Street, into the park and ride facility, which is located between East Buena Vista and Marine Corps Drive. And then the buses go right up to Machechi Avenue, rather than making a U-turn at a median or another intersection, uh, they would just go straight up Machechi Avenue and head towards UOG or uh, UGCC or any facilities in the Mangilao area. So the Dedido Municipal Planning Council uh, did do a walkthrough back on May 19, 2021 with the Department of Land Management and Mr. Babata from GRTA. And we were satisfied with the maps that Mr. Uh, Joe Borja from Department of Land Management and his team put together. It was, uh, the maps were approved by the GRTA board at their board meeting. And then um, of course, visiting the, the uh, approval from GRTA and the, the identification of the, pro the parcels uh, from Department of Land Management, the Dedido Municipal Planning Council uh, does support this property transfer for the Guam Regional uh, Transfer Transit Authority. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and I want to uh, note, Mayor, and thank you that we received resolution number 2021-15 uh, in favor of Bill 198-36. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so um, we will now um, open it up for questions by the panel, beginning with the sponsor. Senator Terlahi, you may begin with questions or comments for the panel. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, you know, the one thing that I really like about, because I toured the area yesterday and made kind of just full discovery of the advantages of using that particular property. And as you know, if you look at the property and considering the uh, the the exit, uh, the two exit on, on each side of the property, it, it, it really is, is going to work. It's very ideal for for the buses to go in and out in that area. And I just wanted to uh, to uh, thank your Municipal Planning Council for actually uh, recommending that area. Uh, also, I wanna uh, thank um, my uh, uh, Senator Mary Torres for being my, uh, my vice, because she's very uh, actually uh, one of the, the individuals that really support uh, to make sure that the uh, uh, the, the $9 million is, is well uh, spent it, and we need to uh, make sure that we have the time frame to, uh, to start the project. And I want to thank all of you for, for listening in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Terlahi. If I could ask uh, Mr. Babalta, if you could uh, just give us a breakdown of the time frame that we're looking at for this project. Madam Speaker, um, we're, you know, because of the pandemic, uh, the um, review and approval process at the Federal Transit Administration has been um, slowed um, in some regards. And as a result of that, we are currently in active uh, negotiation with them in the uh, uh, breakdown of our budget proposal. Uh, we're working together as a team and we're hoping that uh, by, um, the first of the year, uh, we will have a full complement uh, in the approval process and also um, the, uh, the breakdown of our budget proposal. Uh, tentatively, uh, as far as the time frame, um, we've been told that uh, they are giving us um, uh, the opportunity to ensure that our plan is well put together. And then based on the plan, we can move forward in you know, identifying um, uh, the buses that are needed, the batteries, uh, the construction of the charging stations and so forth. So we have um, um, really unlimited time to get this project done. But on the other hand, you know, the governor and, and Lieutenant Governor has uh, mentioned to me and of course the board of directors that rather than uh, waiting for later, we need to, to continue to uh, push forward 
in uh, the planning process and um, and um, you know trying to uh, identify those resources that are needed to make sure that our park and ride facilities will be put together. So uh, we have ample time in this regard, Madam Chair. I mean, Madam oh. Speaker. Okay, all right. I was worried that uh, we were at risk of losing this grant money, but that's good to know. So I tried to get the list of adjacent landowners from the Department of Land Management, and I, I they did not provide that yet. I, I, I am hoping to notify them, have them watch this hearing. And so I'm wondering if you could please tell us how this facility may impact those adjacent landowners. Madam Speaker, I think it will be a, a, a big advantage for them to have the park and bike facility there for at least a couple of reasons. One, uh, you know, some of our riders who perhaps need to, uh, to buy some uh, items uh, at uh, the uh, 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 adjacent faci uh, facilities, you know. Um, you know, the, the, these are, are people who can be their customers. Um, they won't actually, it won't actually be... Um, a detriment because when people go there, they're going to park, they're not going to be, and they'll be parking in a well-organized parking uh, area. They won't be parking along uh, the streets and try to uh, congest uh, their, their business uh, areas, you know? So I think all in all, it'd be a, it'd be a plus for, uh, for, the, for the business owners and the residents around there. And, and perhaps maybe there may be some students who are living around the area. So instead of trying to hitch a ride, uh, to get to school, they can just walk over to the park and ride facility, get on a bus, and head it over to the University of Guam. So, um, Madam uh, Speaker, uh, I'll be more than happy to sit down and, and discuss any issues uh, of residents and businesses uh, uh, around there uh, for any, again, for any issues they may have to, to discuss, um, you know, the, the perspective of the park and ride facility. Okay, thank you. And Mayor, I know that you had uh, indicated to our office that the adjacent landowners are all commercial properties running businesses. Yes, uh, spe yes Speaker. And what happened is all the adjacent property owners, uh, you know, the, most of them are, com they're all commercial uh, and they all have parking within their commercial facility properties. So they have sufficient enough parking for their um their operations. All right, thank you. And so, Mr. Bavalta, one thing, um, in the past hearing, you had said that uh, GRTA was not allowed to lease property under the grant guidelines. However, we followed up with that, and in a letter dated June 10, 2021, you advised our office that after further research and consultation with the Federal Transit Administration, I was informed that leasing is a possibility, but very cumbersome and less desirable. And so I just wanted to put that on the record that uh, that was some clarification that we received since the last hearing. And uh, we, we had hoped that Department of Land Management would be here at this hearing, but uh, we are awaiting more formal testimony from them. Uh, just to confirm these lot numbers. And and uh, so Mr. Babalta, you, you need both lots. Is that right? In the middle of the two lots, it looks like there's a GWA substation or some GWA infrastructure. Is that correct? And, and how do you plan to work around that? Yes, Madam Speaker, uh, there is a, a Guam Water Works uh, substation there. And uh, in communicating with uh, the uh, Department of Land Management. And of course, uh, you know, we'll be able to build around uh, that uh, substation. And then as I, as I noted earlier to uh, um, the chairman, um, Peter Terlai, I told him about the fact that, you know, with, with charging stations and, and the parking of the buses, uh, those require a um, lot of space. So perhaps uh, on one side of, of uh, on one lot will be our charging stations and the parking of the buses, um, you know, overnight. On the other side will be uh, the parking of the, the vehicles and uh, of course, um, a convenience information center. So, so it will be a, a, a bothersome really for that uh, um, substation to be there. We'll build around it. 
All right, and so um, in furtherance with my discussion with G um, Department of Land Management, they said that uh, GWA has jurisdiction over these lots currently because they're supposed to be doing uh, surveys and then cutting out their portions of the property uh, to keep some easements. So both G GPA and GWA have easements here. And so that's the only thing that I can see that might delay this bill is making sure that GWA finishes their survey and cuts themselves out of their property. Otherwise, just allowing for that in the language of the bill. But uh, because their, their easements will come out of these lots. Um, Madam Speaker, if I may. Yes. Uh, I've, I've touched base with uh, GPA and informing them about our thoughts on uh, building a park and bike facility uh, there at the two properties and um, inform them of the need for uh, you know adequate power to support the charging station. So uh, I've, I brought that up to their attention and uh, John Cruz, who's um, the manager for, uh, I, I believe, research and development, uh, uh, said that he was going to put that on his report to the uh, GPA general manager. But okay. uh, I will take note on your comment that, and I will meet up with the um, general manager of Guam Waterworks and let him know what our plans are. And if there's any issues that they may have, we'll try to work things out. Okay, great. Yeah, they, uh, uh, we're in contact with them as well, hoping that they will uh, complete their surveying and severing their, their portions from this lot. And it looks like there might be a deep well and or a pump station, but we haven't confirmed that yet. Okay, um, that's it for my questions. Well, I'll call on now, Senator Mary Torres. Senator Madam Speaker, before, before we move on, um, there's a lot of people, there's some people who are watching this and who have no idea where this location is at. Can somebody describe exactly where, like give some Guam landmarks uh, to tell us where this location is at before moving forward? Okay. I can, I can do that. Mayor, uh, Mayor. Yes. So if, if you uh, look where, so it's across from American Grocery and in front of where ERC, come, they, so they come in where Case Enterprise is, then you have ERC, and then you have the building where the three-story Kasanoki building, and then you have where Martinez Kitchenette is, and then you do, so there's the dog park at one end of the, of the road and Kay's Enterprise on the other end. So it's across, directly across from Winchell's, um, Winchell's Machechi Avenue, that entrance. Uh, so it's between ERC and um, American Grocery. Pizza Thank you, Mayor. That I also, um, I would like to, at this point, uh, forgive me, Senator Torres, but recognize uh, Mr. Joe Borja from the Department of Land Management. So he's here now, and I would like to accept his testimony. If uh, Mr. Borja, you're recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. First off, I'd like to apologize for the uh, late coming into this public hearing. And if you could give me just a moment to uh, adjust my camera so that I don't have to strain my neck to, uh, to look at the camera and then look directly at the uh, committee on it. Um, previously on uh, September 17, uh, Speaker Terlahi, chair of the uh, of the uh, commission had set, uh, the committee had sent an inquiry for some information uh, relative to this bill. And uh, I, this bill I see is a, a structure to do something that uh, previous bill 131 uh, to do wanted to do, which was to provide a um, a location for GRTA's uh, 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 park and ride facility. And uh, since that public hearing on Bill 131, we have been working with uh, Senator uh, Peter Talahi's office, as well as uh, Executive Manager uh, um, Selva Balta and the Mayor and the Council of uh, Derido. Uh, we, have, uh, we have had two uh, site visits to the property. Uh, the latest one a few weeks ago, uh, on a rainy day to show uh, Mr. Babauta that there are some easements on the property and there are some utilities uh, uh, on the property, uh, waterworks and uh, power uh, to, uh, to name a, a couple on it. We absolutely uh, support the intent of the bill. The lot numbers are correct. Uh, I would just like to uh, ask the permission from the committee to work with the staff analysts 
uh, to work a little bit on the structure of the bill. Uh, for example, uh, we would like to keep the lot numbers uh, consistent throughout the process. And uh, this is a weird lot number, lot R2. We usually don't name uh, lot numbers lot R2. Uh, it's usually dash R2 or something like that. But that uh, having said that, uh, only the inclusion of block 9A. So the lot numbers are correct. The uh, details are correct in terms of the uh, square meters area or like that. And um, on line eight of the uh, bill, uh, we would just like to clarify that document number 952621 is a document number. We can work with staff to insert the map document number, which is available in the bill. It's, in, it's there as an attachment. Uh, we just need to identify that in the narrative of the bill. And while Bill 198 uh, seemingly mirrors language in Bill 131, where the surveying and mapping process was done by land management on the original Dededo lot, the lot near the uh, near Harmon Loop 10126. We did the mapping on that one. On this particular lots, the mapping was actually done by Waterworks. So it's just you know who did the map, and uh, it's not land management. It's a valid approved map. It's uh, like that, and. Um, uh, so uh, GW did the mapping. The mapping is absolutely correct, uh, but there is in the language of the bill, uh, because it does uh, reference or was you, uh, Bill 131, there is a, uh, a serious error there, section three, page two, line um, 11, where it makes reference to lot 10126-1. And that's just a drafting error. In this bill, there should be no reference all to uh, lot number 10126-1. That's in bill 131. And although we're trying to do the same thing, this bill really doesn't have anything to do at all with that, that lot number on there. So any reference that you have in this bill, uh, because I believe it's mentioned uh, one or two times, uh, you know, on that lot 10126-1, Take it out, you know, it's it's not a problem to, uh, you know, to take it out, just in the language of the bill. And then secondly, um, I'm sure you're aware and, uh, uh, that there is, uh, if we issue a certificate of title to the bill, uh, there will be a reversionary clause on it. So sell, you don't use that thing in five years, goes back to Gulf Guam, <laughs> you know, which is uh, always good, but I'm not sure. Uh, how the grant uh, provider or the money provider is uh, to that, whether they uh, have a problem with a reversionary clause on there. And if there is a, you know, is there a time that, that it has to be in there? Other than that, basically uh, uh, language grammar, uh, line 19, if any of provision, I believe you should strike out off. But, you know, if the committee could give some leeway to staff analysts, I would certainly work with them to uh, to fine tune the bill. Lot numbers are correct, the intents correct, and uh, the mayor being on here, I think we have the blessings of the mayor and the municipal planning council on that. We did take out Mr. Babauta uh, at least a couple of weeks ago with a uh, measuring stick to show him, uh, you know, some of the easements that are on there because the easements are substantial. And uh, again. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Speaker, my apologies for responding this late to your September 17 letter. No problem. I thank you for your testimony and for the information that you have provided all along and, and today. And uh, if I could, if I could ask uh, between you and the mayor, if I could please get uh, contact information for the adjacent owners, I would just, uh, on the committee side, like to confirm that they are aware and that uh, um, you know, they have the opportunity to review this public hearing video if, if necessary, and that we have an opportunity to hear from them as soon as possible. Okay. But uh, I would appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Borja, Director Borja. And um, so Senator Torres, you're, you are now recognized. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I just want to uh, again thank Mr. Alejo Saban, Mr. Selba Balta, Mayor Savaris, Mr. Joe Borja for your extensive collaboration in trying to find a remedy to this park and ride uh, facility site that we have been um, going back and forth on. 
you know, it, it's always very difficult on Guam because of the availability of land to find suitable land for such a project. And that compounded with the, um, the use of federal monies and not wanting that to expire unexpended um, is, is always a, a big challenge. The, uh, Mr. Borja, you clarified some of the questions that I had with regard to technical errors in the bill that were also raised by, um, by BBMR and, uh, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, but the one question that I had, um, Mr. Babalta or Mr. Sablon is, I, I do have some reservations about the reversionary clause. And while we want to ensure that projects go through um, I also, you know, I'm sensitive to the fact that oftentimes uh, the, um, the grantors want assurances that title is free and that the availability of land is, is, is always there. So is there, uh, in your opinion, is there a need for us to consider either extending the period to complete the project? Um, because we know it is a first time endeavor for Guam, something like this. So do you believe that, that it might be reasonable to extend the, um, the timeline for completion of the project or remove the reversionary clause altogether? Um, I'd just like your, your thoughts on that, please. Mr. Sablan or Mr. Babauta. Mr. Chairman, would you like me to go ahead and uh, address the, uh, the Senator's question? Go ahead, uh, Mr. V. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Torres, um, ma'am, we um, are, are working cohesively with the Federal Transit Administration. Uh, we um, are really focused on, um, on, on making sure that this um, initiative goes forward. And um, we, we uh, don't have any, any reservations about the degree, uh, re reverse the, the clause, uh, simply because we feel very strongly that this park and ride facility is vital for, you know, especially the Northern uh, residents of Guam. So with your question, um, it, uh, uh, in the meantime, we're, we're fine with this unless, uh, you know, moving right along uh, in the event of any drastic um, um, issues that should surface, then, I will go back to, to the legislature uh, and, and ask for uh, to, to address this issue. But on the other, but currently we're, we're focused, uh, we're working well with the Federal Transit Administration and upon approval of um, the, the proposals, uh, we plan to um, hire a consultant to help us put together a plan. That plan is our roadmap in making sure that we are on time that we procure the resources that we need to make sure that this plan is, is done right the first time. And, and the fact that, uh, you know, um, it's gonna work well for the people of Guam. Mr. Borja, did you have some thoughts? Uh, yes, and uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think that's what the uh, feds, and I think that's exactly what the uh, legislature wants to hear from uh, uh, Sel Valauta from GRTA, I, I think as, uh, somebody who's involved in these land transaction, five years for a federally funded project is a, a good amount of time to you know, have a reversionary clause. Uh, he should be able to do it. He should do it <laughs> even by the grant requirements uh, within five years. So that's very good. But having said that, it might also be good for the uh, Committee on Lands to take a look at uh, two or three legislatures ago where uh, uh, different entities around the island were given authorization to use uh, public properties and were given a five-year uh, reversionary clause, just kind of maybe an update on their project uh, to see how that's going along, you know, um, see what our track record is with those uh, reversionary clauses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Borja. Yeah, Mr. Babata, I, I appreciate your confidence. And I think that that is what um, we need in the leadership right now. Um, and also at the board level, Mr. Sablan, that confidence that this is a, a very um, important project that's necessary for the community to continue to be viable, our students and our working population, and also people that just need to be able to meet their obligations and uh, requirements for um, either 
running their errands or even attending to uh, doctor's visits and the like. So I, I appreciate the confidence and I'm, I'm very um, proud to work alongside you to make sure that we see this park and ride facility uh, off to the ground and uh, complete it. So thank you everyone for your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Senator. Chair, Madam Chair, can I also uh, make an additional Mr. comment? Mr. Rabalta, yes. Uh, Ms., uh, Madam Speaker, um, the other, the other um, really um, very important support that I'm getting is uh, from the governor, Lieutenant Governor. The governor had already noted to me that, hey, we got to move forward on this. It's, it's you know, uh, uh, an, an initiative that, that's going to work well for the people of Guam, especially the northern um, uh, part of Guam. And uh, she uh, has instructed uh, me and, of course, the board to make sure that we stay focused on uh, making sure that this initiative moves, uh, moves forward in, um, in you know, uh, an effective period of time. So uh, we've got that support from the leadership of the administration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rivalta. Uh, I We tried to put a screenshot of the area uh, on the chat uh, for all to see. Um, I don't know, Mr. Bo uh, Mr. Bohr, if you could take a look at that and, and confirm that that is the correct place. But uh, also in a letter dated July 20th, you advised that lot two, block 9A is under the temporary jurisdiction of GWA to sever their easements, then return the remainder. So I just wanna confirm, is it your opinion that their severance uh, is completed and do they still have jurisdiction of these properties? Are we transferring it from GWA or has it already uh, returned, the remainder has returned to the government of Guam? Uh, Madam Chair, they have severed their interest in the property as evidenced by that map. And that's what I mean about that map being prepared actually by GWA through a subcontract with uh, Duenas Camacho and Associates on it. And on that map uh, in the notes part, I believe it's in the middle part, you see the grantor grantee uh, issue where it says that uh, grantor uh, hereby releases uh, only the interest of the, uh, only the interest of the um, uh, utilities to that portion that they are occupying. So on the map that I'm looking at that was attached as exhibit A, that language is uh, under the authority. If you look at the map, in the middle of the map there, I, where it says special note, and then below that, it says authority. And of course, to the right of that are the signatories uh, on the top there from Waterworks. And it says, uh, grantors here by grant transfer, assign, and convey to the grantee, which is Waterworks, in fee simple absolute, the real property interest for only those portions of lands required by the grantee for public utilities purpose. And that is uh, absolutely identified as, uh, uh, as I believe lot one, block 9A. So that entire block 9A was uh, divided into three pieces. And uh, the utilities own lot one, block 9A, which is right in between the two uh, parcels that we're talking about. All right, and who is, who is the grantor? Uh, the grantor is the government of Guam and right. PUAG, because this lot was subject when uh, PUAG was being converted, converted into Guam Waterworks Authority. Uh, every uh, facility, pump, sewer line, water line, that was owned by PUAG was slated to be transferred over to GWA, but they were not severed. In other words, there would be this big government of Guam lot and there would be a water pump station on there, but it wasn't surveyed and it wasn't severed. And I believe the bond requirements that uh, GWA entered into and the requirement on the conversion from PUAG to GWA required that uh, that uh, GWA uh, sever out, identify, map, uh, you know, get your own, uh, get your own property 
uh, so to speak. So that involves, I believe, about 211 lots all over the island. This one just is one of them in the Dededo area. All right, thank you. Um, staff, can we show the map momentarily? And Mr. Borja, can you just, uh, if you, or, or Mayor, if you could just identify some of the landmarks in that map. Sorry, we don't have a pointer for you to use, but uh, if you could just describe it. Not that map, sorry, the, the Google map. The, the yeah, aerial. Yeah, the aerial map. All right, while we're waiting, uh, I'm gonna proceed with Senator, sorry, Senator, you're on. Senator Ada. Thank you, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker. Um, Mr. Babauta, is this, uh, is this bill uh, time essence? I mean, do we need to, you know, you were saying earlier that, uh, you know, they're giving you the time that you need to make sure everything's in line. And uh, so is this bill time essence that we need to pass it in this session or any session in the next couple of months? Um. Sure, the sooner the better. And yeah, I, I believe... understand sooner the better, but what is, is this bill time essence that it needs to be passed this session? No, sir, it's not. And for our October session, would it need to be passed by then? Uh, it, it'd be an advantage to the Guam Regional Transit Authority. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the reason why I ask that, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, the Municipal Planning Council passed the resolution. Was the public invited to that uh, resolution hearing? Uh, no, uh, we, we had our, you know, our, our Municipal Planning Council meetings, um, uh, Senator, are open to the public. We do have a public forum in our, um, in our agenda. However, the public that comes in are usually when we have, uh, and in this case, we did have the uh, uh, mass transit, the bill, Bill 198-36 uh, uh, on our agenda, because it was a follow-up from our visits with our site visits with land management and GRTA. So that was actually old business for us uh, because it was a new bill that was gonna be on the introduced and uh, scheduled for a public hearing. But at our, at our Municipal Planning Council meetings, we also have um, individuals who are applicants who have uh, applications in with Department of Land Management for setbacks, rezonings. So our, our, our uh, MPC meetings are open. Uh, all notifications go, you know, are, are done by Department of Land Management. That's our normal with our MPC. However, uh, in this case, because the bill is with the uh, department, I mean, with the Guam legislature. Uh, we, you know, of course we discuss uh, uh, all the um, facts that we have from the different agencies that are relating to uh, the bill that's sitting at the legislature right now. But in this, in, in most of our cases are, we do have public forum and most of the public forum uh, but in, in this particular case, no, the property owners were not notified about our discussions on the, uh, on the public law, I mean, bill number 198-36. Oh, thank you. And, you know, the reason why I, I ask is because I, I look at the map and I see that, you know, there's a lot of property owners uh, that are along the street of Buena Vista. And then when you look at Iglesia Circle, that goes out to the traffic light, the, the three-way traffic light, am I correct? In front of the old Coban, okay. the old police station. And then the other side yeah. uh, goes on to Loretta Street, which also goes up to Case Enterprise and the, uh, uh, the old steakhouse there. And then on the other that side of that is Isengsung Road where the traffic light. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just really concerned because I'm looking at our participation here, our participants. And I don't see not one individual from the village of Derido, you know, any any um, any stakeholders here, 
listening to the public hearing and I just don't want us to be passing this bill immediately and then coming back and then you know we get an uproar from the public that they weren't notified and I think that when we talk about uh, old business and new business with the especially with the resolution you know we were talking about a piece of parcel that was down by the school and the uh, the uh, I think the, the track and field there the, uh, the gym area so I, I, this has a whole different now, this is a subject area that is, uh, that will impact the residents who live in this area completely because when you look at traffic that goes in there in the mornings or in the afternoons when, they, when people get off and start taking the transit and leaving the park and ride, the traffic light there could be, um, I mean, it's already, you know, just right now, uh, because my, my, my son stays in Dededo and I go up there quite often, almost on an everyday basis, that coming out of that traffic light, you, you already have uh, congestion at, at certain times coming out of Iglesias Circle. And the traffic, the traffic there is just, um, I, I mean, it, it just has an impact on, on the traffic and I'm concerned. And I hope Madam Speaker, uh, perhaps maybe if we can get the, the constituents from this area to please come in and testify on this bill publicly so that, you know, we, we wanna make sure that they're informed and that they, they didn't say that the legislature passed this bill and we didn't, we didn't have their input. And that, that's just my concern. Otherwise, I, I'm in full support of, the, of a park and ride and, you know, having mass transit uh, start building these facilities. But I think it, it would just be prudent for us uh, for for the public to to be here to testify. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Senator Ada. Mayor Mayor Savaris. Yeah. So, Senator, you know, one of the discussions we had during the site visit uh, with the Department of Land Management and Mass Transit, uh, you talked about the the congestion coming out of Iglesia Circle. Well, we had talked about the. Uh, the mass transit also including working with the Department of Pub Public Works on including another traffic signal going up Machechi Avenue. And so that if, there, if we had a, a intersection going through from Buena Vista, from the park and ride up to Machechi Avenue, not just for the buses, but also for, for people to come out of park and ride, um, it would eliminate some of the congestion coming out of Iglesia Circle. And that this, that's the discussion that we had during the site visits as well. Uh, that, and that's you. great to hear. So my question is then on that follow-up, um, did they take that into consideration and then also turn around and include that in their plans for a, a construction of a, of a traffic intersection there as well? And is that going to be just a one way where you can only go, um, traffic will be diverted from, you know, going out where the residents go out to just that traffic intersection there that will be uh, pro a proposed constructed intersection? Well, Senator, what ha is going to have to happen is that Mass Transit will have to have a traffic study with the Department of Public Works. Remember, this is highway maintenance, uh, I mean, highway, uh, federal. A highway because they would be tapping into the uh, existing traffic light there. So that's something that mass transit in the meantime, while they do their design, would have to uh, have that discussion with DPW's uh, traffic management system. Okay. So then with that said also as well, Madam Speaker, perhaps we can get the input from DPW uh, as to if there'll be any roadblocks to that. Uh, prior to you know the passage of this bill, and that that's just my my uh, my thoughts only on it. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We will pursue that input. Thank you very much, Senator Ada. Senator Brown. Senator Brown, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to ask, also looking at the location, uh, this is an open aired area for the mayor and up in Dededo, and I just wanted to ask because, I mean, you did relay, of course, that the area of where this uh, center is going to be located is in front of the current uh, commercial businesses, but of course that road also comes out, as, as Senator Adam mentioned, uh, where the old uh, police fire station used to be. 
uh, and their residential homes further down in that roadway. Um, so I just wanted to get your feedback because you mentioned that public notices were provided. I have to tell you, I very rarely ever see published uh, in any of the papers uh, notices for municipal planning council meetings for probably any village. So I just wanted to inquire of the mayor um, how that public notice was made to the community and, and the island on the municipal planning council meetings for this particular issue. If I could just ask Mayor Savaris that initial question. Yeah, so speaker, I mean, I'm Senator, I'm sorry. The uh, public, uh, our municipal planning notices are on every, you know, are on the mayor's council website for each village. And um, one of the things is, you know, we do use our village uh, uh, news with, through the PDN when we post our notices up to, I mean, not, I don't know how many people read that, but I do use that as uh, an announcement uh, venue for our upcoming public hearings and public meetings. So the Department of Land Management, again, uh, because they do have applicants that uh, submit applications for different uh, event, you know, setbacks and rezonings or height variances. Uh, they also are aware every second Tuesday of the month is a municipal planning council meeting. So like I said, we were, um, were, we were informed by the mayor's council that our, um, during our regular meetings, and we're always reminded to put our uh, MPC meetings on the website, uh, the mayor's council website. No, I, I appreciate that, uh, but I but I would note for the record that that doesn't necessarily meet public notice requirements. So it might be something, Mayor, uh, as we're trying to get compliance with GovBomb agencies. Perhaps I, I know it isn't a key issue here for this bill uh, in general with regards to public notice, but that's probably something maybe we could further discuss with the Mayor's Council, just to make sure that your meetings are compliant with the public law. But I, I do concur uh, with some of the comments made by the speaker in trying to get feedback from the adjacent property owners, because as we mentioned, the closer you get to a glacier circle, there are residential homes that are located on the, the other end of that same street. Uh, and it would be important to get their feedback. I don't think any of us can argue the importance of having a facility uh, to be able to have, uh, you know, members of our community be able to board the bus and take advantage of mass transit. It's just a question of getting support from your surrounding uh, landowners and then also uh, any concerns they have just about the increase in traffic because that, that secondary road there is not a very wide it's not a very wide road and it's just a question of what impact that's going to have to them of having additional buses and other traffic in that area. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Vibalta with regards to the, uh, the layout. Uh, I don't know if you guys have formulated, I guess that's dependent on once you secure which property, but I noticed there are a number of trees that are located and I wanted to know if that's something you're gonna incorporate into the design of this facility or are you gonna go out there and bulldoze and tear it all down? and pave it all with uh, asphalt and, and concrete. So I wanted to get feedback with regards to that because we're essentially taking some green open area uh, that's part of the whole strip that that section of the village has adjacent to Marine Drive and we're going to remove that green space. So I wanna get feedback on how can you incorporate so that aesthetically, um, you know, for the, for the driving audience going by and also for the residents there, how we can preserve some of that uh, greenery in that area because I, I just, hate to see that all just turn into concrete and asphalt, which aesthetically um, would not incorporate any type of green space into it would be very unattractive. So I wanted to get some feedback from Mr. Babauta with regards to that. Senator Brown, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, definitely um, in building uh, a GRT facility and even in my past experience with, uh, you know, uh, building of facilities when I was in the United States Air Force, we always be, we're always mindful of the fact that number one, the facility has to be built to perform the function of what's intended for. Number two, it's maintainable. Number three, it's energy efficient. And very important is the fact that the area and the facility has to be aesthetically pleasing so that we can not only attract based on the need to do that park, park and ride, but also to attract our customers based on you know the, the, the outlook and the main, maintenance and upkeep of the facility. So, Definitely, that will be incorporated in in the planning process, Senator Brown, with regards to uh, you know to to keeping the the trees and others that uh, 
who enabled to make our Parker bike facility aesthetically pleasing for the riders and the people of Guam as well. Well, I, I don't want to adversely impact. I mean, if this is definitely going to be the location for construction, but if you could work with agriculture, because we have a tendency sometimes to pave up to the, the base of the tree and put asphalt in it and not have any consideration to how the tree is going to sustain itself. And we have a lot of people in the community that are getting more conscientious about, especially these older trees. I mean, those trees have been there since many of us were little children. Uh, so we very much would like to see that addressed because I know here in Aganya, when they actually did the expansion of the Tomorrow Village and they tore down some of those larger trees here, the, you know, there was a community outcry with regards to that. So uh, that would be very good to be mindful of that. And then, Madam, uh, Madam Speaker, I, I would hope that GWA would give us some formal feedback if they do have a deep water well there. Uh, I don't know if it's a test water well or if it's one they extract water from, but it would be good to get feedback from Waterworks if it is a... Um, it was just a test well. I mean, there are different requirements, but certainly if it's one that we extract water from, there's going to be a setback area with regards to space that's required around that uh, that could not have construction. So I think it would be good to get that issue clarified with Waterworks, what exact uh, water well that they have in that area, just because of the setback requirements that would have to be in place. We will. With we will. To the well. From GWE. Yes, we will. Okay, that, that would be good. I mean, I understand the need for it, uh, definitely, of having a facility. I mean, I did uh, sit in on the public hearing several months ago when the other other property was discussed and there are easement issues, concerns of surrounding residents. And then, of course, it was just a, more like a strip of property that was, you know, had limited use in terms of ultimate design. So I, I recognize the need of uh, mass transit for needing such a facility. But again, I just want to make sure that it's, it's something that uh, is welcomed by the community. And as Senator Ad also brought up, we're not creating more congestion in the area and that it's something that we can consolidate and, and include some green space uh, so that it just doesn't become an additional asphalt and concrete adjacent to Marine Drive and have something that's a little more creative that our community can enjoy. Uh, with that, Madam Chair, I don't have any further questions with regards to this bill at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Brown. And we will allow uh, some time for additional testimony on this bill. All right, uh, Senator Taitigui, you're recognized. Uh, Madam uh, Speaker, I think uh, um, Mr. Borja had his hand raised up. Um, so if I may, can I ask him to go ahead? And Oh, I just wanted to go on the record that uh, Silva Balta has been uh, pre-warned or forewarned by the mayor of Dedido not to touch those trees in the road. So that was a, that was a warning uh, uh, several months ago. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Speaker, my grandfather planted those trees, so I'm very protective of that. All right, Mayor. So I know you're going to protect those trees and make sure that they don't pave asphalt up to the roots, make sure that they're proper, have enough proper space to continue to thrive. I, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you so much. Senator Taitigui, please proceed. We have Jim waiting for the next yes, uh, round. So thank you. Well, my colleagues asked uh, questions and also brought to light some of the concerns I had too as well. And I think that uh, uh, Mr. Rabauta, if you can, just a rough draft or sketch of what you plan uh, to to you know build there and where you plan on putting the parking lot. I mean, before you uh, bring this to the the businesses that are surrounding the area as well as the community, if you can just put some kind of rough because right now we're just looking at this long strip, and I lived actually right behind the uh, Chinese Garden once upon a time in in the early uh, 80s. So I know this area very well. And Mayor, if I'm not mistaken, when it rains, it really rains in that area. There's been flooding along that area. So I think we, we should have EPA there on any kind of flood mitigations. Uh, Mr. Babauta, please check into that because I remember it flooding quite a bit uh, when it does rain. Um, so other than that, just a, a rough draft. Uh, so that you can show the community exactly where the parking lot, by the way, how many parking stalls will you be able to, to uh, put in this area, Mr. Bavalta? Senator, um, I agree. I, right now, uh, we're we at the property. Uh, we're looking at putting, uh, hiring a consultant. And, uh, but I, I would love to see at least um, uh, 150 parking spaces there. Um, available for people to park at. And of course, you know, the, the parking spaces are available throughout the day, so people may come and go, but definitely at least 150 parking spaces. Although okay. I have to wait for 
the plan to be fully developed. Okay, that's that's great. So other than that, uh, GWA testimony and EPA testimony um, and the community as well, that's all I have. I thank you everyone for being here to, to testify and, um, and show your support for something like this because I think it's definitely needed, most needed. Thank you, Madam Chair, or Madam Speaker. Thank you again, uh, Senators, and thank you again to all of you who have testified and really uh, very much helped us. And if you could, we could just follow up with some of the requests that we've made prior to this hearing, uh, and uh, we will follow up with the adjacent landowners. So we will um, keep this bill open for at least 10 days, if not longer, uh, by the committee. And so everyone, if you want to submit testimony, please do so to Senator Terlahi Guam at gmail.com. Uh, we will now adjourn this public hearing on Bill 198-36-COR. Sisu Masi and everyone be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker.